let's just get a quick sound test out of this thing. shot makeup makeup okay you look fucking great all right let's go all right hey here it is uh i've been working on this bastard but the best thing i can say about it is it's actually playing really well it plays actually quite a lot nicer than uh, my real gibson plays uh, at the moment I haven't done any real adjustments to that, I've just kind of been playing it as is. This one here, of course, put all the Epiphone parts and electronics onto and into everything from the switch to the pickups to the tailpiece and the, the bridge. Uh, I put a brand new Graftech nut on it. The only component I haven't switched out is these uh, crappy fake Grovers. So just a few notes about what I've done. Uh, obviously I rubbed back all the, uh, the crap that was on here, I cleaned it up. All I've done is just sand this down to a, a fine grit sandpaper, I put a bit of paste wax on it. It's got a nice satin finish now, there's still a heap of that Chinese lacquer all over it. The plan was to clear coat all of this, obviously, but you know what, it just really hasn't worked out that way. It's starting to get cold. And this seems to be holding up okay, so all I've done is I've kind of gone over this with paste wax as well. And I don't know if that's going to protect it any, but it seems to be sticking to it. And the original. You know what, if some of the paint scrapes off, I, 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 I'm kind of hoping that I might refinish this guitar again because it's become a bit of a project guitar but in the meantime I want it to play well and right now at the moment I'm happy with the way it looks I don't really love this top it's okay I can now tolerate this top with more of the black accents and I think that these black accents kind of pull out some of the details in this top so to me it looks a little less washed out uh, and a little less busy. Uh, obviously, I'd like to have this back a different color, but for the time being, like I said, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, the neck, I had, I sanded down the paint a little bit with uh, some 2000 grit sandpaper. It's just a bit sticky, and I think this paint is actually a lacquer paint primer combo. So it seems to be holding up pretty well. Uh, it feels nice and satiny on the back now. It's it's comfortable to play uh, and it seems like I said it seems to be holding up pretty well. So for fun I went ahead and I put that on it. The other thing I'm working on and I took a little bit of video of me making this but it's just a pick guard. I cut that, I scratch cut that uh, from a leftover Telecaster pick guard that I had. I just traced out the shape and then Fit it around these pickup covers, because these pickup covers I had to paint them too because they're an odd size. The, ins the interior dimensions of these pickups are okay, like they'll fit any humbuck humbucker, but the exterior dimensions are just a touch bigger than regular uh, Gibson stuff. So I cut this, I managed to cut this so cleanly that it, it actually sort of friction fits there. <laughs> I can almost leave it like that. <laughs> because it, it, it's been cut pretty tightly and of course you put a little bit of lacquer. Now I've got a flat in the lacquer that I put on the top of this. This has been clear coated. I painted it because it was this uh, yellow parchment-y type pick art anyway. Uh, I primered it, painted it with the same paint I used on the outside of the body. 
Then I scraped away some of the black paint to get that nice little reveal around the outside. Uh, then I clear coated the whole thing and it's been sitting for a few days. It's okay to touch. And now I just have to flatten it with some sandpaper and polish it out. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of a satin uh, shine on it like the rest of the body has. Uh, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do if I'm going to try because I don't actually have, you know, that little L bracket assembly. i got to go either buy one or make one. Um, and I think that for my first scratch cut pick guard, you know, once I finish polishing it and, uh, you know, mount it some way, I think I'll be happy with that. Part of the reason I like pick guards on Les Pauls, if I'm really honest, is because I find them comfortable. I find this a place to rest my hands. I find that without this pick guard, I guess I've gotten used to, it's my personal preference, I guess I've gotten used to playing so many Les Pauls with pick guards that I find this a good place to rest my hands while I'm playing. I, I just naturally find that this is a nice, comfortable rest area for my fingertips. Playing style. I also personally think they look good, but like I say, more importantly, it, it actually um, meshes well with my playing style because I do rest my fingers. Down. Anyway, uh, there it is. It's 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 sort of finished for the time being. Oh, I'm just going to wait until I can grab some actual real Grover tuners, and that's all I'm going to put on this. Apart from that, there's not a whole lot left to say. It plays really well. I'm really pleased with, uh, you know, this coil tapping business that came out of the Epiphone. The electronics all work really great. The only problem I'm having with this is I broke this push-pull pot. Uh, the little nubbin on the end obviously has worn away enough that it won't reseat itself. The volume still works, so that's a bit of a pain in the ass because that's an actual Epiphone part and I haven't got a clue where I would get an actual Epiphone part because part of the problem with that is, uh, if you look back at my other video, when I install these, there's actually a little, they've got a little tiny little circuit board where the pickups actually mount with a little connector, uh, just uh, like Gibson's, but they're not the same as Gibson, obviously. It's a different connector, and the circuit board in this case is attached to the actual push-pull pot, and I've kind of poked around a little bit online to see if I can find original Epiphone parts. Uh, I haven't been able to find any as of yet, so I'm going to kind of deal with that as is. I suppose I probably could rewire the whole thing, but that sounds like a lot of trouble, and if I can lay my hand on an original part, it's just, you know, swap and go, and that's kind of what I want. The other thing I thought I might try um, is because obviously the only part of the, the only problem here is that this little nubbin is a little bit worn away. So I thought the other thing I might do is maybe try and put a little blob of solder on the end of that just to make it a touch bigger. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll see. Won't, you know, won't hurt it. Uh, worst thing that happened, you know, the worst thing that'll happen there is I have to scrape the solder off. I don't even know if the solder will stick to it. Uh, that's it for the time being. A few little flaws here, there, and everywhere, but you know what? I feel pretty connected to this one now, and uh, it's been an interesting process. This one's it's fought me quite a lot, but like I say, the really important thing about this guitar right now to me, in my eyes, is not so much how it looks, but it's playing really, really good. I can deal with the way it looks based on the fact that it's actually playing really well and there's nothing there's nothing apart from there's nothing about the way it plays that bugs me anymore. The neck feels good now, all the measurements are really good, the action is really nice and low, you know, there's no buzzing at all anywhere. So I'm pretty pleased with the way it's playing and sounding. And that's what I'm mostly pleased about. I know there were a few people, at least, that were interested in how this thing turned out and what it sounds like and what it's looking like right now. So for those of you who were interested, so this is the afterword for you guys who, who time after time I put up a video and you come up and you say nice, kind things to me. Uh, I really appreciate it. This is, this is for you guys. This is for everyone, but I know there's a few of you guys who are probably more interested in this than, than some of the others. But I appreciate everyone who comes onto my channel, whether you leave a comment or a view, uh, or pardon me, a comment or a like or anything like that. That doesn't matter to me. Um, I do appreciate that stuff. I'm never going to get on here and beg you to do that kind of stuff. I don't care if you comment or like or any of that nonsense. Uh, the only thing I ask, I don't mind what you say to me. I, I don't care. You say whatever the hell you want to me. You call me whatever name you want. You say I look funny. Call me anything you want. Just don't, don't go on and hassle other people who are commenting on my videos. As long as you don't do that, I don't give a shit what you do. 
As long as you're not hassling other people who come to enjoy my content and or comment on it, I don't care what you do. So say whatever you want to me, but just leave everyone else alone. Just be cool. If anybody has any questions or you want to see anything else about this, here we can talk. And I'm starting to let people onto my Facebook. My name, actually, I don't think I've ever actually properly introduced myself. My first name is Nelson. Uh, it's Nelson D'Souza. Wadesso is just an acronym of my wife's last name and my last name. Yeah, yeah, my first name is Nelson, so you are uh, welcome to call me by my first name or whatever you like. Uh, and I welcome everyone. Uh, there's been a lot of new subscribers in the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, thank you for that. Um, thanks everybody for the really kind words and comments and views and all that kind of stuff. It's really nice. And it keeps me going. So it's something to look forward to. Thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it. That's, uh, that's hopefully a good look at the fake Gibson Les Paul Custom. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon um, with a G&L uh, Legacy something or other. It's really nice. Uh, we'll see you that next video.